Thursday. Just got off work, piled in the mega cab, getting ready to try to drive across the state of South Dakota tonight. Um, heading to Dorchester, Wisconsin. I would like to get all the way across South Dakota and maybe a little bit further tonight. It's right at 800 miles where I'm heading to. I'm gonna pick up a new PC equipment that I think I made a deal on with uh, some guys over there. Um, I'd like to be back here probably tomorrow night, Friday night if I can. Uh, I've got, uh, got a guy coming on Saturday to look at the bulldozers, so that's my plan. Wish me luck. I'll try to keep you guys updated as I go. Rapid City, South Dakota. We're gonna make our first stop here. We're swinging at Jimmy John's, get a sandwich for the for the road, and then on to I-90 for the whole way to South Dakota. 285 miles in. Two miles in, made it to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Old Meg Cab says we're doing 19.4 miles a gallon. What does the calculator say? Let's see here. How about there's the calculator? Kind of hard doing this with two hands, two phones. 422.5 divided by 25.9 on the pump, 25.9 equals 16.31. I kind of figured that the computer on the Dodge was smoking rocks, but. Uh, I am gonna push on. Uh, we about wore I-90 out. I think there's a little bit farther to go on it, and then we start heading north. Well, we wore out uh, I-90. I have to say that uh, South Dakota takes better care of it. A little bit smoother going across there. Now we're on Highway 60, basically heading north. 40 degrees. Well, everybody, we've got 795 miles on the ticker. I'm within seven miles of my destination. Um, they open at seven o'clock in the morning. It's 4.30 their time, you can't see my time, 3.30, my old time, so 4.30 Packers time, I guess you'd call it, but uh, I'm going to try to get some sleep on the in-between, and get up in a couple hours and keep kicking down the road. Stay tuned and you'll see where we're heading tomorrow. <clears throat> it's a pretty cool country back in here. Damn sure ain't nothing like home. This is a very typical place right here. There's I've been driving by these for 10 minutes, one right after another. Getting close. Guess what we're up to? Because we are there. Brute force firewood processors. This is where they're made. 
Dorchester, Wisconsin. And it looks like the one we are after is right up front. That's it, closest to the building, I believe. Nice. All right, guys. There she is. Hooked on to the old Dodge. And we're headed west. Uh, I'll do a better walk around when we get home. Um, it's heavier than I expected, like heavier built. It looks really good. This is a used machine. Of course, they sell brand new ones. They are some of the nicest people you ever run into. Very helpful and knowledgeable threw in a bunch of extra parts that I might need give me a spare wheel and tire so I can make it home um, I got 800 miles to go and they just want to make sure make sure I made it home got a free hat and sweatshirt so hell yeah on to the next step we got 70 miles in let's get out give you guys a sneak peek feel the hubs on this make sure we're doing all right there she is, Brute Force 1824 HD. How's these guys looking? Tires are a little warm, but not too bad. Oh, that's not warm at all. Nice. Got a four-way wedge in it. They threw in a couple pieces I can weld onto this if I want to make it a six or an eight-way. Huh. Looks like beans or something right here. Surprised the animal ain't out here eating them. Here's all the controls. It's supposed to be able to cut up to an 18 inch diameter log. 24 inches long will fit in here. Let's check this guy out. It pulls really well. Oh yeah, we're not warm at all. Looks like the center came out of that grease cap so we got a little grease hanging out. But it's all right. Sweet. I brought an eight lug wheel with me, but it was a six lug, so that's why they threw that one in. Whole bunch of extra conveyor pieces. Chainsaw chains. Whole box of those. And there's the plates they threw in for me to weld on. Super nice people. We better kick for Wyoming. We got a long ways to go. What the boat catching air. Don't see them out in Wyoming ever. Oh, we're in the traffic now. Come from a town population of like 3,500 people get up here and the whole town's driving right next to me. Pretty close to St. Paul, Minneapolis. But we're heading the right direction south. Get the hell away from this place now. The uh, processor's pulling great. Well, you never see this where I'm from. We're slowed down to basically 15 mile an hour because everybody's trying to get off on their exits and just get to where they need to go. The only thing I don't understand is, you know, it's 11.30 their time, so I guess maybe they're going to lunch, but it's been like this for an hour or two. Just kind of heavy traffic, but where are all these people going this time of day? You know, what? how come everybody ain't at work? Just that many people around that there's this many people have the day off or what? I don't know. Pretty crazy. Okay. We just jumped back on to I-90. I think it was Worthington is the name of this town. Um, that's a good feeling to be heading straight west. Uh, bad deal because we're like 400 miles before we get off of this road. Um, it's going good. I fueled up up the road here a little ways and uh, I ended up filling up the processor too because the tank is towards the front of the trailer assembly 
and I would just notice it watching it. If I'd hit some bumps, I'd get a little whip in it for just a second, and it would come right back out of it. But uh, it seems like that it was like 11 gallons of fuel it took, so that's close to 100 pounds. Or, but that helped set that tongue down a little bit better. It's 1.30. Mountain daylight time, so that'd be 2:30 corn time or whatever the hell these guys go off of. Uh, should put me home like 8 8:30 tonight. Uh, the best way to drive across South Dakota is to be like three quarters lit and in the dark because it's boring as hell. But. Uh, by the time we get to Rapid City, it'll be dark, and that's where we get off and go back through the Black Hills. I could about do that, uh, drive in my sleep. Been doing that for years, so. I'll check in with you guys probably, oh, maybe when I roll, roll into home, or if I something cool happens on the in-between. But uh, for darn sure, we'll fire this thing up tomorrow, and, Run some wood through it. Slight mishap outside of Chamberlain. Blue tire part on the processor. Doesn't surprise me. Tires aren't very worn, but they're old. Took two jacks. Kind of bent my fender up. Ain't gonna be into the tire going on, though. Just kind of bent it up. Well, thank God for cordless tools. It only took me probably 10 minutes to change that tire. But uh, we're going to, uh, we pulled in the gas station here. We've been burning through the fuel because uh, such it's so windy out. But uh, here, I'll show you guys. <laughs> 9.7 miles a gallon, just killing it. Take a look around though. This side still looks pretty good. I did tear up my fender mount a little bit, or I did when I was trying to jack it up. But that's an easy fix. Just broke the weld loose. It's gonna stay plugged for the rest of the trip though. So, let's get some fuel in this old Dodge keep trucking. There's the damage in a little bit better light. Tread just came off. No big deal with the spare, just as long as we don't do it to the other one. We'll be looking it over a little bit better. Can't hardly see it with these fenders, but doesn't feel like it's gonna have pups anyways. Some days you can't win. Blew the tire on the other side, messed the wheel up, ripped the fender off, and I don't have a spare to put on it. Nope, neither does anybody else. Oh, it's like 9 o'clock, 9.30 at night. Rapid City's that way, like, I don't know, 30 miles. Homes that way, like 30 miles. Looks like I'm sleeping in the Dodge again alongside the road. In the morning I'll run over to Rapid. <sighs> get some new tires put on, or get a tire put on that other wheel, and probably go and try to buy another spare. It's been a long day. This one seems like it holds air. Got a flat spot on the top. 
I noticed that when we put it on there, but it could have. Yeah. Ah, I think it'll be fine. I got a pile of logs in there if you want to try it. <laughs> I got a pile of logs too. Okay. I don't need I, it. I will. Chester, Wisconsin. It's 12 hours from here. So that you, you end up with 24 hours of driving wasted, leaves eight hours left. That'd been all right if I had spent that whole eight hours sleeping, but two tire changes. I don't know how many diesel stops and fighting the wind on I-90 was just absolutely horrible. So, we finally made it though. I'm not very impressed with the single axle design because you really rely on one tire on either side a lot. You pretty much almost need two spares with you, seems like. I think those tires that are on this machine are probably their originals from 2014. Uh, like I said, they did not look weather check worn or anything like that. They look great when I left, but they just broke down over time, you know? It's, it was literally 800 miles today. So, I'm not blaming that on anybody. I just wish it would have had two axles underneath because I would have chained one axle up and kept going, but I need a shower and then I need to go to bed. I'm beat. I think I only got about three hours of sleep in the last, like I say, 32. So we'll uh, check back in tomorrow when I get this back to the shop and put the fenders back on. See you guys then. By the way, where did I come up with that tire and wheel to replace this disaster? I ended up calling my mom and dad. I was hesitant to do it because I knew that they'd be in bed, but uh, I'm glad I did. They came through, brought me a new, new tire and wheel to get me home. They always come through. Thanks again, mom and dad. I know they're watching. We made her home last night. I got up this morning and Ripped the wheels off, took them down, had some brand new tires put on. They're 10 ply tires. They were what was on it, so that should be good enough for another 14, 10, 10 years, I guess, or whatever it is, almost 10 years. Uh, I pounded the fender out as good as I could, and put some big washers on it, and then sprayed it down with some paint because she suffered some road rash on top from last night's ordeal we actually ran a little bit of wood through it too i got a video my father-in-law and brother-in-law and i i'll pan too after this let you guys watch it eat some wood i got it all set up here in my soon to be firewood yard had a load of logs delivered got the mini hoe here so i can set them on there this is supposed to handle about a 10 foot log, 12 foot log, but we did set some of these full length ones on there and didn't have a problem. So it's going to work great. This thing is cool. I've wanted one of these for a really long time. These guys have got a really light, nice low deck. That's one thing I like. Some people don't. Because they said everything's so low that the wood chunks build up underneath it. They don't like that, but hell, I think I can stick a rake underneath there and rake them out. Or even move the damn thing. That ain't that hard. But uh, 
if you guys want to see any more videos of this thing running let me know i can go through some stuff especially after i've ran it for a while and get better at it we're all we were all kind of fumbling on the controls but it'll get better the longer we use it thanks for watching guys